Last episode, we went over the history of early Mesopotamia, beginning with Sumer, leading into its place in the Akkadian Empire, arguably the first empire we know of. The empire fell after invasions from the Zagros Mountains, leaving Sumer to reign again with an empire of their own. This lasted until the Elamites sacked the city of Ur, ending Sumerian hegemony forever. But the Near East was host to numerous other civilizations as well. The Elamites, while living on the Iranian plateau, were not an Indo-European people, like the Medes and Persians. They had been present there before the Aryan expansion, that brought over the Iranian peoples, and those who would settle in North India. Semitic civilizations dominated the Near East, with kingdoms along the Levant, and down into northern Mesopotamia. One of these, was Assyria. They would be the main power in the north for centuries, but we need to wait another millennium before they truly become masters of Mesopotamia. To the north were the Hittites, another Indo-European people. We believe they crossed into Anatolia from the Balkans, supplanting the Hattians and Hurrians in the region. To the south was the ever-present land of the Pharaohs. It was among these players, that the next chapter of the Near East would take shape. With the Neo-Sumerian Empire dissolved, this power vacuum had to be filled. And in the 18th century BCE, one of the old Mesopotamian city-states began to expand. Babylon was under the rule of the Amorites, a Semitic peoples from the west, and would be destined for great glory. Under the dynasty's sixth king, Hammurabi, Babylon went from a town, to a truly remarkable city. After driving out the Elamites back east, Hammurabi would take control of southern Mesopotamia, then head east towards Elam, and then north, up the Euphrates. Putting the Neo-Sumerian Empire to shame, this first Babylonian Empire was the first to unite all Mesopotamia, since Sargon of Akkad. Because of this reach of the empire, Hammurabi instituted what would be his most famous legacy. A code of laws, that was written on stone slabs and pillars, to be viewed by the public. This wasn't the first law code, but is the most famous, because of how much survived. This code of Hammurabi incorporated all kinds of regulations, from marriage, divorce, and inheritances, to its harsh penalties for kidnapping and robbery, and for helping slaves to escape their owners. Although rule was harsh under Hammurabi, Babylon would become a beacon of engineering, arts, and sciences. The Babylonians were able to make strides in astronomy, observing up to five different planets, and creating practical mathematical and algebraic formulas. It is also likely that they invented the sundial, an ingenious way to tell time using shadows. Unfortunately, even the most innovative of empires are only as great as their leader, and Hammurabi's successors couldn't live up to his standard. In 1595 BCE, Babylon was sacked by another expanding peoples. From the rocky European portal of Anatolia, the Hittites would often meddle in the affairs of Mesopotamia and the Middle East. These Indo-Europeans were fearsome warriors, and would change warfare in the Middle East forever. Using a type of carriage, mounted on wheels, and pulled by horses, the Hittites' military was unlike anything Mesopotamia had seen. These chariots were manned by two soldiers, one to steer the horses, and one to inflict missile damage to the foe. Sumer had utilized chariots in the past, but these lumbering four-wheeled contraptions were less mobile and pulled by donkeys, as horses were a rare commodity. We suspect these weren't used during actual battle. The sack of Babylon was one of the highlights of the Hittite civilization, as they would fade into obscurity for the next couple of hundred years. That is, until the 13th century BCE. They would return to conquer Anatolia and regions in the Levant. Their success this time was attributed to their development of iron weapons, which was more readily available than bronze, an alloy needing both copper and tin. 
Though their expansion went fairly smoothly, the Levant led them south and towards a power that was also in a new period of expansion and was ready for conflict. Egypt awaits.